So this time I'm working on pretty much the same still life. I have oil pastels. Uh, these are not exactly the same brand as what we use at Zionsville Community High School, but the same kind of ideas and some of the things I'm going to discuss are pretty much the same. So I literally just used a little bit of white, this kind of slightly creamy yellow, and this blue to do this cylinder, and now I want to work on the sphere. So I think I'm gonna pick a different color way, and I'm gonna talk about this guy in just a minute. Um, I think on one of those other examples, I used some orange and some red, so how about, we'll do like a reddish orange into a violet value. I might utilize this yellow, I, or this white. I could utilize the yellow, but we're gonna talk about a couple of things here in just a second. Okay, so we've established that I'm doing all my still lifes the same direction. My light source is coming from that left side. So I know I wanna leave an area of highlight here. A lot of times we think the white of the paper is good enough. But really, I kind of want to think about the fact that I'm going to need pastel in that highlight zone in order to make the media unify to define the object. Okay, so this white pastel is pretty white still. And even though I may not be able to see it, I'm going to kind of scrub a little bit of white into that zone. You might be able to see, I've got a few little, what I call pastel boogers left on there. That's okay. I'm gonna let them sit there. They're not gonna fly away if I tilt my paper. They're not going anywhere. This is oil pastel. It's gonna sink into the paper. So if I decided I wanted to utilize maybe this color way, kind of thinking highlight, middle value and shadow. Right now I'm noticing a decent amount of blue on my yellow. If I'm not going to be anywhere near a blue in the colors that I'm choosing, that blue might kind of mess with my drawing later. So before I start using that yellow, I'm going to find a scrap sheet of paper and I'm just going to kind of make some marks with the pastel to kind of wear down those zones that have that blue still mixing into it, okay? The other reason I may want to do this is it may help me get a sharper edge, and I'll talk about that edge when we get into the sphere. So after I've kind of cleaned off, and I'm back to mostly a pure creamy yellow. Let's call that creamy yellow. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to start to apply some oil pastel maybe around that highlight that I put in. If you uh, remember thinking about your pencil techniques and we talked about hatching and cross hatching, I discussed that a little bit in the chalk pastel video. You may want to think about hatching and cross hatching because we are going to layer these colors together to get them to blend and create new colors. So here I'm going to put some, some of this red on top. I'm going to bring the red around in a cross hatch value. So right now all I've got on here is some yellow and some red. And then I may take that violet color and bring that in along the bottom. So remember how I, I said something about, I'll talk about sharpening the edge of that oil pastel when I did my cleaning off sheet. If I've got a sharper edge to this, I can come in very carefully along the edge of my object, so essentially the contour 
of my object. And as I start to apply my media, I'm going to give a decent amount of pressure to clean those edges or clarify those edges so that I can pick up a nice edge with that violet. Okay, I'm going to hatch some of that violet into the red. Keep in mind my oil pastels. I like to use them very thick. Some people like to put some, some color down and then do some stroke marks so that it'll sit on top. I'm a little bit more painterly with my use of oil pastels, but I'm going to come back to my light color. So for me, it's this yellow color. And I'm going to start to blend or smear the edge of that yellow into that reddish orange color that I put down. Might bring a little bit of that to the actual contour of the sphere. Take my dirty side, kind of pull that around so I see some submerge. And then I'm going to take the red and layer back on top of that violet that I put down. Again, kind of hatching and cross hatching until I start to achieve that color mixture that I'm looking for. Oil pastels can mix literally kind of like paint. They're an oil based media. So they're gonna give me that sense of, of shift and value just like a paint would. I think I wanna make that highlight just a smidge more yellow in there. So I'm gonna kind of blend that through and on top. Now, as you're looking at this, uh, I think you guys can see, I've got what I like to call pastel boogers on my sphere. So places where I've had a decent amount of pastel kind of build up. So here's, here's one that maybe I can lift off. Whoop, see him? He just came off, right? I have a paper clip. If you're working from home, a paper clip may be all you need. At school, you may have some tools that you can use to kind of pull some of these little boogers off or lift some of these off. Um, maybe not necessarily for this media study, but for some other projects that you may have coming along. If you take something that's fairly hard, like that paper clip metallic, you can literally scratch through your oil pastels. So if I wanted to create the illusion of a texture in here, I might utilize some pastel. I think you can see that. Let me just grab a close up very quickly of it. So can you see where I scratched through the oil pastel there? And you can see all those booger things hanging around. So as I, as I utilize the oil pastel, I can kind of play around and do some interesting things with this. Another one of my favorite things to do with oil pastel would be to put some dark pastel on top of light pastels or even crayons. Some of you may have done this before. I might do a whole crayon drawing take a bunch of dark or black oil pastel and layer over the whole thing and then scratch out little patterns with a paper clip or whatever other object I might have that can literally scratch through that thick oily pastel surface. Those can be really interesting and fun things to do. But I'm not really doing that with this drawing. This drawing, I kind of want to mimic the idea of what my still life is looking like. So, hey, if I do scratch some of that stuff off, maybe I've got an edge that I might not be able to totally get rid of the edge that overlaps like here. I've got some funky loose lines over here. I may not be able to scratch that out and get that nice and clean, but that's also kind of the effect of the oil pastel. 
it's going to be a little looser. It's not going to be able to be controlled. Just like the chalk pastel, you kind of got to work with it and play around with it and get it to the point where it's not going to be precise. It's not a pencil. It's not a fine point. We aren't going to be able to to get a nice, smooth, even edge every single place we want it to be. That's the beauty of the pastel. So I hope this demo helped you a little bit with the idea of what these guys can do. They're thick, they're creamy, they're begging for you to just mix them and layer them on top of each other and make a nice thick, thick drawing. If you take a look at what I just put on top here, I just ran some more yellow on top of that. Note how different that zone looks in relationship to the cast shadow where I just used one color. So if I start to blend colors together, I like that effect. I like the, the nuances that those take on. Um, some people use oil pastels as, as just the line itself. Those of you working from home, a somewhat comparable media to these oil pastels is going to be crayon. You know, the old box of crayons that you had for elementary school. That's going to mimic these qualities. If you use them densely, use them thickly, you cross the directions. So again, a cross hatching kind of quality to them. You're going to get a little bit of the same effect, even in a media that's what we deem as a cheap media, the Crayola uh, crayons or the Rose Art crayons. You can kind of build up this kind of area to it. Now, take a look at what's happening with that yellow. Did I clean it before I started on here? No. Close up again. What do you see right there? You see blue and green in there. What do you see right here? Some orange and reds hanging on in here. So again, it depends what you're trying to go for. If you're looking for a nice clean edge and line, sometimes you got to take the step to prep your materials before you start. Okay. If you're going for a more painterly loose look, maybe you let that go. Sometimes that can be just as interesting. I hope this demo helped and you enjoy working with some of these pastels in our Intro to 2D Drawing Unit.